I want to talk today about unstoppable revival and the finishing anointing that I believe is now activating. This will be a, another prophetic word, but I've uh, been feeling it all week, actually, uh, before even last Sunday. So listen with those spiritual ears and let's see what the Lord might be saying today. After the 4th of July last weekend, and seeing again the senseless violence and murders as well as the lies and, and the distortions of truth, as I, was, as I was praying about all of this, Holy Spirit began to give me some understanding. I actually began to pray very earnestly on Friday, which was July the 3rd, feeling burdened for our nation, our world, and wanting some, uh, some understanding concerning the church, the ecclesia. So I spent much of that day out by the lake, Caesar Creek Lake, mostly just praying in the Holy Spirit, praying in my heavenly language and listening. That afternoon, I began to feel a shift in the spirit realm. It was very noticeable to me. And I heard the Holy Spirit say this, the nation will begin a reset tonight from Mount Rushmore. And I began to think about reset. What does that mean? Reconnect, reconstitute. What does that mean? I knew that President Trump was giving a speech that night from, from Mount uh, Rushmore and so I knew I would be watching it after hearing this. But something Holy Spirit said, that there's something that would begin a reset from Mount Rushmore that night. I didn't know what that would be. I just knew that the ecclesia would hear something that it could align with, pray, or decree in some way. That's all I knew. And that's all I heard. And that night as I, I watched uh, from Mount Rushmore, I text message a group that I'm a part of from around the nation of apostles and prophets and intercessory uh, prayer leaders. We have an open uh, text thread that we can uh, put our comments on or declare what the Lord's saying and others can comment. If not, we can at least look at it and see what's being said. And uh, that night, I text messaged out to that group. Tonight, Holy Spirit says, from Mount Rushmore, there will be a reset that begins. Uh, the next day, I heard from one of those, I uh, heard several from that night, but uh, from that night, but I, the next morning, I heard from one of them that said, did you know that Mount Rushmore is located in Keystone, South Dakota? I didn't know that, but that began to really speak to me because just a few weeks before the new era Pentecost began on May 31st, 2020, Holy Spirit, you may remember said the Keystone is being raised in place on this new Pentecost. And I knew that we were going to have a special Pentecost, and I preached that to you on that occasion. This would be a literal Pentecost. The keystone, of course, is the piece of a building that holds the rest of the building in, in place. It's it's the top piece of an arch system that the beams lean against. That, that ring up there is a, is a keystone. And these beams, these arches lean against it to hold it in place so the building can be finished. In other words, the keystone, uh, without the keystone in place, a building collapses. It falls apart. And so I knew that that the special Pentecost we are now in was about finishing what God is building or finishing something that, that God is doing. 
And whatever that is, it's not going to fall apart. Holy Spirit is setting the keystone and what is being built is going to fit together. Prophetic promises will now be finished. Kingdom of God purpose will be finished. And I knew that finishing angels like finished carpenters, the finished carpenters, of course, come in at the end when you put in the baseboards and you, you, you finish it up. Finishing angels are now assisting Holy Spirit to help us finish some things. And I began to see the glorious ecclesia will now come together all races, all creeds, all tribes, tongues, and ethnic groups with very explosive power released through that group by Holy Spirit. The fireworks of Holy Spirit through the New Testament church now begins and you will see now awesome and very, very strong leaders rising up into or rising up through the inclusive ecclesia. You'll see these very strong, powerful leaders from the Hispanic community. You will see them in the First Nation community. And I especially saw that in Alaska when I was there teaching. I knew that a prophetic move of God was going to come out of that ethnic group in Alaska. You're going to see these very strong leaders rising up into this, ecle this inclusive ecclesia from the Asian community and from the African American community, all races. Holy Spirit has groomed them. He's not been doing nothing. He has groomed them. He has uh, preserved them and he will now reveal them. Apostolic and prophetic leaders from these ethnic communities are now going to rise in this new era, Pentecost. They're going to be very, very bold. They're going to say what God says. And Holy Spirit now in this outpouring is going to activate their voice. He's going to activate radical faith through them. Watch my promotion, the Lord says. The Lord says, watch my promotion. It's finishing season to plans I have. A finishing anointing is being poured out to complete assignments. This will provide anointing for my sons and daughters to see individual plans I have for them and their families to be finished. Well, Tuesday morning after the 4th of July weekend, while I was praying, Holy Spirit spoke to me again. And this word set some things deep inside of me. It just anchored some things. It refreshed some things in me. It, it, it fired some things in me. Here's what he said, and I, I, I wrote it out for you. I will do a work in your days. It will be hard to believe even though I'm telling you. Trust me, follow me, set your mouth. Not shut your mouth. Set your mouth and declare my vision that will now be seen, activated, and accomplished. Well, I knew that was a rhema word from the scriptures. And now Holy Spirit's breathing it fresh into our times. He's now giving it fresh, new application for our times right now. He's saying this to his remnant, to the ecclesia, to the heirs that are a part of his unshakable kingdom. So this is a live or an alive, an alive word, alive right now. And we need to decree it and let it explode into the narrative of our times. God's word is alive. It is active. It is powerful. It is sharper than a double-edged sword. And we need to fill our world, world with it. And an inclusive ecclesia is now going to do exactly 
that. Now this word of Holy Spirit drew me to its youth, use both in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. It's, an, it's amazing how Holy Spirit, he takes biblical accounts and stories and applies them in a rhema way to our times. He tells us what God did then and then assures us he can do that again. He's no respecter of persons. So I want to now put pieces of the prophetic puzzle together for us that we've been seeing unfold for the last few months and give more understanding. I, I want to build hope. I want to build hope through it today. Hope that is sky high. I hope I can build faith sky high. I want to declare your future's good. Stop listening to any other scenario. Your future is good. Your destiny is going to break open in magnificent, dramatic new ways. Don't focus on the what ifs. Your children are going to be blessed. Don't look at the other scenarios because our God is working in amazing ways and a shift has now taken place in the spirit realm. The church is going to win. Revival is going to roll through the entire world and what God, what God does will change everything. It's going to change your life. It's going to change your family's life. It's going to change everything. Get your hopes up. Get your faith up. God promised we will prevail. That means that we will. No gloom and no doom theology. We declare that this room is a no gloom room. We declare this sanctuary is a no doom room. God promised, I will make you stronger than your enemies. That means he will. God says our kingdom is unshakable. That means it is. God says Holy Spirit's filling you with explosive power. That means he is. Now I want to focus on a statement. The Apostle Paul in Acts 13, 41, in his sermon at Antioch gives and a statement by the prophet Habakkuk. Acts chapter 13, 41. Behold you despisers, marvel and perish, for I work a work in your days, a work which you will by no means believe, though one were to declare it to you. The Message Bible reads, watch out cynics, look hard. Watch your world fall to pieces. I'm doing something right before your eyes that you won't believe, though it's staring you in the face. Paul was quoting from the prophet Habakkuk. Habakkuk was prophesying into his times, into Israel's history concerning the Babylonian captivity. Israel had sinned and there were consequences for it. And their enemy had gained the upper, upper hand for a while because of their sin and their passivity. But God promised freedom is going to return. He promised they would wake up, that there would be an awakening. And when they repented, he would hear and he would heal their land. He promised when they repented, deliverance was going to come. From the midst of the darkness, from the midst of the captivity, deliverance would come. Now here in Acts, Paul compares Jesus coming to a world that was in bondage to sin and death to Habakkuk's word. He says, yes, there is bondage. Not hard to see it. Yes, there is darkness. Certainly can see that. Yes, it looked like nothing could, it looked like nothing could change that. But God promised, he says, he promised he would send a savior. He promised he would send a deliverer. 
And out of the darkness, Jesus came to bring them real freedom. In other words, something happened that was hard to believe even though man was told. Something even the disciples found hard to believe even though they were told. So clearly Christians find some things difficult to believe even though they're told. And they have to stir up their faith and trust what God says. We are in one of those times right now and we must trust what God says, though it may look difficult. And of course, the cynics, the despisers, really won't believe it, though it's staring them in the face. Well, Holy Spirit reminded me of this early Tuesday morning. It was like a a breath of fresh air just came into me. And I thought, if Paul could use Habakkuk, why not me? Why not us? Why not here? Why not now? Why wouldn't Holy Spirit make the application? So let's read what Habakkuk said. Habakkuk 1.5. It says, look among the nations and watch. Be utterly astounded, for I will work a work in your days which you would not believe, though it were told you. Now hear it like I heard it Tuesday morning from Holy Spirit. How he said it. I will do a work in your days. It will be hard to believe, even though I'm telling you. Trust me, follow me, set your mouth and declare my vision that will now be seen, activated, and accomplished. In other words, it will be finished. It will be done. Now listen to some more of what Habakkuk wrote centuries ago. It starts with the burden Habakkuk the prophet did see. Habakkuk 1 verse 2. God How long do I have to cry out for help before you listen? How many times do I have to yell, help, murder, police, before you come to rescue? Why do you force me to look at evil, stare trouble in the face day after day? Anarchy and violence break out. Quarrels and fights all over the place. Law and order fall to pieces. Justice is a joke. The wicked have the righteous hamstrung and stand justice on its head. Here's God's reply. Look around at the godless nations. Look long and hard. Brace yourself for a shock. Something's about to take place and you're going to find it hard to believe. My point is not to address what God did centuries ago concerning Babylonian captivity. <clears throat> Holy Spirit is saying, saying it to us a different way. My point is, what is he saying and doing now? We must discern it. And Holy Spirit says, something so big is happening, it's going to be hard to believe, even though it's been prophesied to you, even though you've been told. A special new Pentecost is not being poured out upon us so that we could lose. So that we could lose with dignity before Jesus comes. No so that we can prevail. Three months or so ago, I talked to you about Gina Golston's dream about revival. Now I wanna revisit that briefly because you have to look at prophetic words over and over. I can't, I couldn't tell you how many times I've looked at a prophetic word. Uh, I may have read it 10, 15, 20 times and then five years later, there's a line, I said, where'd that come from? And it speaks to us. You have to go back over. You have to meditate on them. 
And I want to revisit some things briefly because the very next week after I shared that with you, I received another dream from Apostle Ken Malone uh, in Florida that I've never talked about. And now I want to put the pieces together for you. Gina's dream was about the Red River Meeting House Revival in Russellville, Tennessee. It occurred the year 1800. And uh, it started the second great awakening. It was the very first camp meetings ever, ever, that we ever had in our nation. The first camp meetings began in 1800 uh, at Red River. People came from miles around. They would sing. They, they danced. And they would just shout, just start shouting glory, shout hallelujah. And they'd just shout. And then in the evenings, they took communion. It was an awesome revival. Then in her dream, remember, the Red River Revival connected to the Cane Ridge Revival in Cane Ridge, Kentucky. It's about 20 miles from Lexington. And it began in 1801. It was a huge outdoor camp meeting. They had multiple service going around the hillsides. Then to have the amplification speakers like we do now, PA systems. And so an evangelist, a, a preacher would find a tree, he'd get under it for shade and just start preaching and they would gather around. There may be another one over here doing the same. There may be 10 or 15 people preaching the word. And there were hundreds of people gathered around them all around that Cane Ridge hillsides. Also, it was at the Cane Ridge camp meeting that people began to be what we call slain in the spirit. They would be overcome with the power of God and just fall. And somebody said, looks like they were slain. And it stuck to this day. Someone overcome with the Holy Spirit. We say they're slain in the spirit. Started right then. But they would drive their their horse and buggies from, from miles away, some as far as Detroit, and they would come. They bring their own food supplies because there wasn't any place to go buy food, and they, they would camp, and they would cook their own food, and they would attend the camp meeting. People would come under such conviction that they would just start crying out, what must I do to be saved? I need to be saved. God, save me. An awesome revival. Then in the dream, the Red River revival and the Cane Ridge connected to the Azusa Street revival in California that began in 1906. In this revival, miracles started to happen. Great healings. People were healed of all kinds of diseases. Healings began. And also, at the Azusa Street Revival, people were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in their heavenly language again. And actually, the Pentecostal and charismatic roots that we have go back to that Azusa Street Revival. Also, they begin to meet house to house and have, have prayer meetings. One, one house they gathered in to pray, the glory of God would come down on that house to such a degree that people walking by on the outside would be slain in the spirit. It was not unusual for people to be laying in other people's yards, just walking by. Then these three revivals then connected and synergized together as part of, in her dream, as part of the Welsh revival in Wales. It took place in 1904 and in 1905, led by a young man named Evan Roberts. That year, there were 150,000 
conservative estimate people saved. It is the largest revival ever in Wales. Thousands of miners were saved. Mining was a a large industry there at the time. And the the miners loved to sing. And uh, when they're underground, they begin to sing and they would hear the song down the line being sung. They'd pick it up. Further down the line, they'd hear it. They'd start picking it up. And you might have a, a hymn that was sung a mile long or further. And people would, would gather around the, the air shafts that, that were above ground. It went down so they could breathe good. They would put lawn chairs, not lawn chairs, chairs, whatever they had back then. They would come around, set chairs up, and listen to the miners sing. And the songs would rise up from the ground. The number one song, and I played it that Sunday during the Welsh revival, was Here is Love. It was sung hundreds of times that year. Here is love, vast as the oceans, loving kindness as the flood. When the prince of life, our ransom, shed for us his precious blood. Who as love cannot remember? Who can cease to sing his praise? He can never be forgotten throughout heaven's eternal days. On the mount of crucifixion, fountains open deep and wide. Through the floodgates of God's mercy float a vast and gracious tide. Grace and love like mighty rivers Float incessant from above. Heaven's peace and perfect justice. Kissed a guilty world in love. It was sung by the miners. Sometimes for hours or so. And it would reverberate up around the hillsides. And the prophetic word that we saw that morning as I shared those dreams. Was that it was time for the gusher. Revival wells are being uncapped and a worldwide revival is is coming and it's going to redefine our moment. It's time for the gusher. The Welsh revival that that Gina saw in this dream, synergizing with Red River, Cane Ridge, and Azusa, has been something the Holy Spirit has drawn me to for the last couple of decades, and I don't know why, I didn't know why, Uh, but it's just, I'm drawn to the Wales revival, the Welsh revival. It's just been something inside of me. And I remember being in Canada five years ago, and I know I told that story, but I, I need to tell it, I'm reconnecting some things. Not only that, there are thousands of people watching right now that have not heard it. But I'd gone to Canada to do a camp, uh, do a meeting. And uh, Carol went with me. We got there just a little bit before uh, the meeting started. And so I only had a few minutes to think, uh, to think about things, maybe just 25 or 30 minutes. And I remember sitting down saying, Holy Spirit, they're about to pick me up, pick us up and take us to the, the meeting. What are you saying? What what what? What's the, why am I here? What are you saying to us? And clear as I've ever heard, he said, the revival in Canada will be like the Welsh revival led by Evan Roberts. It will go throughout Canada and then it will come down into the United States. And I wrote that down, put it in my Bible and they were there to pick us up. We arrived at an old hockey arena that's where the meeting was being held. Maybe five, 600 people uh, could be there. And we come in the back and come right out by the platform and there's the pulpit uh, and we're walking to the front row and, I, and there's a chair right beside the pulpit. Well, I didn't know why the chair was there. I went, we sat on the front row and the leader of the conference said, to to me, do you see that chair? Yeah, I saw the chair. And she said, 
That's a chair from the Welsh Revival led by Evan Roberts. It's over 100 years old, and we brought it tonight and felt we should put it right here. I reached in my Bible and held out the piece of paper that said, the revival in Canada will be like the Welsh revival led by Evan Roberts. I just got it 20 minutes or so before. Now, now, Holy Spirit is saying to us, remember the Welsh revival. Pick up the mantle of the Welsh revival. Now, the week after I told you all of that, and I told it in a whole lot more detail, if you want the details, it's, you, can get the, you can get it. it I have already taught it. But actually, two days later, I received a dream from Apostle Ken Malone, a dream that he had just had, and I could hardly believe it. He had no idea what I had just talked about, couldn't have. Here's the dream that Apostle Ken had just two days later after I told this about Gina's dreams. Here's the dream. I was walking on a wooden loading dock. Next to the dock was a passenger train, not a modern train, but one built in late 1800s or early 1900s. I knew this train to be heading for Wales. Can't make this up. Many people were on the loading dock and boarding the train. Cheryl, that's, that's Ken's wife, is already on the train and I'm getting ready to board when a lady came up. She looked exactly like Trinity, Carrie Ann Moss from the movie Matrix. As Trinity laid hands on me, she said, rest. I fell forward, slain in the spirit. When a lady from behind catches me before I hit the ground. Trinity lays, then lays her hands on me again saying, rest. I fall forward, slain in the spirit. As I lay on the wooden loading dock, I begin to see the word goodness in red letters all around me. Goodness, goodness. The words were bright red and flashed brighter and brighter and brighter. At this point, the word goodness never left the scene of my dream. I get up, I need to get on the train, but I can't find my luggage. I go back onto the loading dock and find my luggage. The conductor begins closing the door as I grab my luggage and get on just as the train starts to slowly move. The word goodness continues to flash brighter and brighter and brighter. The scene changes while on the train. I see a huge map displayed out in front of me. I can see the track or the trail we will take to Wales, but no city names are displayed. Just the track that would take us to Wales. The word goodness flashes over and over on this map. And then the dream ends, but it's not over. After awakening twice during the night, when I fell asleep, the dream begins again. And I dreamed this over and over and over. What a word of confirmation. Goodness is all over you. Goodness is surrounding you and you're on the right track. What a sign. I couldn't see any of the cities on the map, just the tracks that would take us there. What a signpost of Holy Spirit. We're on the right track. 
Please hear that. We're on the right track. Don't stop. God's bringing a Wales type revival to synergize with the other awakenings and also the new things that he is now going to do. It will roll through the entire world. We're on track. And goodness is going to surround us. God's goodness is going to be seen all across the North American continent and then radiate throughout the entire world. It will roll like a powerful locomotive. That's what Prophet Chuck prophesied that we saw a couple of weeks ago. Revival will be like a locomotive and it cannot be stopped. Ken said the dream never stopped. It just kept, it just kept coming over and over and over. Now hear this, and you might see why some of the strategy of hell is being so dominant right now. The revival that we're now going to see is like the Welsh revival. It will be a singing revival. Worship is going to play a key part. Praise, new sounds, songs of the redeemed will play a huge role in it. And worship is going to go to a new level. I think that's why hell is saying to the church right now, you can't sing. Don't you dare sing. Don't gather, put a mask on, don't sing. It's scared to death of what's about to happen. But we're going to sing. We're going to sing in the midst of the storm. We're going to sing the praises of God. We're on the right track. Revival's coming and it's not going to stop. We need to get on board the glory train. The promise of God that we've been holding on to is coming to pass, and he has confirmed it over and over. How many times just this year has he given us clear confirmation? You're on the right track. Keep going. Don't give up. You're on the right track. You're on the right track. Don't give up. Don't back down. You're on the right track. Stay focused. The third great awakening revival is now being synergized together with the other revivals. And it's not ever going to stop. It's time for the gusher. Holy Spirit, King Jesus, Father God will now, will now show us heaven's goodness. Good overcomes evil. God knows how. He knows how to follow us with goodness and mercy. He's going to show us his goodness. The Trinity is going to give us rest. Times of refreshing. Rest in his presence. Rest in his glory. Rest in his goodness. A world shaking World shaping, world changing, revival is on track. Don't consider another scenario. It's on track. Hear the word of the Lord. You're going to see the promises of the Lord. You're, you, you're going to see the promises God made finished, completed, accomplished in your life and your family's life. It's going to happen. Hear the word of the Lord. I will do a work in your days. It will be hard to believe even though I'm telling you. Trust me, follow me, set your mouth. And again, set your mouth doesn't mean shut your mouth. 
Unless, of course, you're speaking negative. Then guard your mouth. Set your mouth. How? According to the word of God. Set your mouth to say what God says. Don't say anything else. Like the proverb says, if you have to grab your lips, grab them. Mm. I will do a work in your days. I feel this in every fiber of my being. I know when I hear from the Lord. I will do a work in your days. It will be hard to believe, even though I'm telling you. Trust me, follow me, set your mouth and declare my vision that will now be seen, activated, and accomplished. Sing for joy, it's finishing season. Sing your praises, finishing anointings being poured upon you. Sing and worship, finishing angels are being activated. Get on board the glory train. Decree in welcoming decrees. Prophets and apostles coming from other ethnic groups. Prophets. Apostles rise from the Asian community. Rise from the African American community and say what God says. I'm telling you, God has prophets and apostles. You say, how did he do it? How does he do anything? I don't know how he does it, but I'm telling you, he said, I have hit apostles and prophets in the ethnic groups and I will now bring them forward. You're about to hear some leaders come forth that are gonna startle the world with bold, aggressive statements of faith of what God says. And not all of them are in the religious mountain. Some of them are in the marketplace. Some of them are in the, the, some of them are prophets or apostles. They have that anointing and they're in the political realm. And you watch God rise now, raise them up through an inclusive ecclesia to say what he says. And the fire of God's gonna be all over them. Get on board the glory train. Hallelujah. 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 Singers, come on. Lord, I just pray right now as an apostle in your kingdom. Lord, bring out of, from hiding, from maybe cave times, whatever it is, those leaders that you have groomed, you have reserved for this time. Those prophetic voices, Lord, that, that you have done a work in their heart. And I pray, God, for an inclusive, an all-inclusive ecclesia to now rise, to penetrate the atmosphere of darkness with glorious light, saying what God says. We call them forth in Jesus' name. May they attach to this apostolate, Lord. May they be a part of this apostolic center decreeing what you say. Raise them up, Lord, from every ethnic group. Help us, Lord, to help them. Help it all synergize together, Lord, in the gusher that you're sending. Thank you for confirmation, Lord. We're on track. We're on track. Just stay on track. Just stay on track. Thank you, Lord, for the confirmation. Blessed be the Lord. We glorify you, Lord. Hallelujah.